What's up everybody? Welcome back to my channel, the place for founders, entrepreneurs, marketers, and anyone who wants to drive more sales, get more leads, and increase their conversions. Today, we are talking about mobile landing pages. I've been getting a ton of questions on Instagram, on Twitter, on our Facebook group. Everyone's asking, do I need a mobile landing page? How do I get more people to convert on mobile? If I'm running Facebook ads, how do I make sure that people on mobile actually convert? Well, that's what we're covering in today's video. We're gonna be talking about everything, why you need a mobile landing page and how to create one that will actually drive the conversions that you need for your business. Let's get started. First things first, let's get one thing out of the way. Mobile users are not mini desktop users. We don't use a device the same way. We have a completely different mindset and it's super important that we know that. It is not enough to design a landing page for desktop and then shrink it for mobile and hope it works. We have to understand that we search for different things. We use our mobile device for different things and it's not just a smaller screen. It's a completely different mindset. That's why it's very, very important that if you are using a landing page builder, that it actually allows you to create, edit, and design a completely different variation for mobile. Because if you are right now thinking in a way of like, I will design in desktop and then on mobile it will look good, that's not gonna work. You always have to think about mobile. In fact, I urge you to go to Google Analytics and look at your traffic right now and see how many people are coming to your website through mobile, how many people are coming through desktop. Chances are most people are coming from mobile. And I would urge you to start switching the way you create landing pages and start creating them on mobile and then adapting them for desktop. Let's talk about some rules and tips and ideas on how to create high converting mobile landing pages. First off, let's make something super clear. People scroll on mobile. You should not be afraid to have a long landing page. It's okay if it goes on and on and on because people scroll on mobile. Get it out of your head and out of this place you're stuck in if you are worried that your landing page on mobile should be super short, you should condense things, you should remove content. Not true. You should have the same amount of content, the same content on your page. It just needs to be designed differently and needs to be adapted to mobile behavior. Let's talk about some rules for designing your mobile landing page. The most important thing on the page is the text, the actual text, all the copy and everything that you're using on it. So what you want to make sure is that all the backgrounds, the colors, the images that you're using are supporting that text. You see, what happens is that when we design for desktop, we have this beautiful, wonderful background, colorful, maybe there's all sorts of people and images and screenshots of your product. And then when you condense it into mobile, it becomes an obstruction. It makes it super hard to read the text and it becomes almost impossible to read because essentially what you have is everything condensed into that tiny screen. And now all the colors, all the images, and the text is on top of each other. But there are different ways you can go about it and I'll give you some ideas in a minute. But one thing you wanna make sure about the text is that whatever the background, it allows you to actually read the content. Another thing you wanna consider is the font size. If on desktop it's a certain size and then you actually look on mobile and you're like, this is too small, increase it. It's super important that people should be able to read on mobile. Increase the font size. I like to use 14, 16 pixels. And the other thing is white space. So have a lot of white space between different items on the page. Space everything out. Our second tip, and that is to do with your call to action buttons. The thing is that we usually hold our phones in one hand and then use our thumb to actually scroll. And you have to remember that if you have items that are too condensed with each other, people are gonna be clicking on the wrong thing. There is nothing more frustrating than trying to tap on a button to convert or to reach out to someone and accidentally tapping the wrong button, which actually brings up the fact that you have to make sure you only have one call to action in a section, because if you have too many, people are gonna be tapping the wrong thing, they're gonna get frustrated and they're gonna bounce. So white space is crucial and also consider increasing the size of that button so that it's easier for a person with any size thumb to actually tap 
on that button. So again, let's review this. We want more space between the different items. We want to have bigger call to action buttons and we want to make sure that we only have one in each section so people aren't accidentally tapping on the wrong thing. So we've spoken about text and the importance of highlighting it and making it readable and looking at the, those backgrounds and making sure that they're not disrupting reading. We've talked about white space. We've spoken about the buttons and how they're important. Now I want to talk to you about images. Images are crucial on mobile. And I know that most of the people that I've spoken to struggle with identifying what kind of images they should be using on mobile and how to actually use them and place them on the page when they are designing that mobile landing page. So there's a few rules that you want to follow when it comes to mobile images. Number one, you want to reduce any cognitive load, any friction and any noise. That means no carousels absolutely no carousels. The other thing you can consider is using different images than you have on desktop. I do this all the time. You can definitely have one image on desktop and another on mobile. You don't have to have the same one. It just depends if the image that you're using on desktop works well on mobile. Sometimes it doesn't and you don't have to have the same image. You could consider to just use a different one. So now let's talk about the actual header of your landing page, because I know that this is where most people struggle. And this kind of combines everything that we've spoken about so far, which is text calls to action and your images. So there are three go to strategies that you could use. Number one, you could use the exact same image that you have on desktop and simply make it a little lighter just so that the text stands out more on mobile. Just make sure that you have some sort of effect on that image and it makes it easier to read. Number two, you could use a whole different image on the income engine waitlist landing page. So this is a landing page that essentially allows people to sign up for a waitlist for my program. I have one image on desktop and one image on mobile. So on desktop, you can see that there's me as the hero image and on mobile, I have eliminated it because it just didn't work. And I used a different image, which essentially is a keyboard. The third option that you could use is actually placing the image on top and having the text below it. That's exactly what we did for power up toys. One of our clients essentially on desktop, we have the copy on the hero image, but on mobile, it looked terrible. So we placed the image above and the copy below. If you're worried about the image taking the whole page, just remember two things. Number one, people scroll. Number two, you could always crop the image a little and show a bit of the copy at the top so that people know that there's copy coming and that way they'll start scrolling. So any of those could be your go to strategies when it comes to the placement of the image and the copy in your header section. Now, there's another option that you could use, which isn't to do it so much with images, but about call to action buttons. So Monday actually has a completely different call to action system on desktop and on mobile. So I visited their landing page and on desktop, they have multiple selections. So you can essentially choose what you want to sign up for. But on mobile, they, I guess, understood that that wouldn't work. So they replaced it with a simple sign up button. So this is a great example of understanding how your mobile visitors behave, what they're looking for and how to adapt your mobile landing page for them. And this is super critical because maybe on mobile, people want to do different things. Maybe they're just researching and they'll convert later on desktop, or maybe they just want to do some things and explore that they can't do on desktop, or they're just commuting and they're just trying to figure out stuff. So it's just important to really understand how your mobile visitors behave and then adapt that call to action for them. Now let's talk about including specific mobile elements and plugins for mobile behavior on your mobile landing page. There are three elements that I've tested time and time again that have always worked for me on mobile landing pages that do not exist on desktop. So number one is the click to call button. If you are an operation that allows people to contact you and call you, I would urge you to consider adding a click to call button. I know that I've tested that before and time and time again, it has really performed for us. Now, if you don't have the option to call you, no problem. You could use the click to chat 
button, which is another quick way for people to contact you on mobile that you wouldn't necessarily have on desktop. So that's number two. The third thing that I would recommend is the quick scroll to top plugin. If you're using WordPress or any other landing page builder, you should be able to install this simple plugin that basically allows you to scroll to top with a tap meaning that for those people who are scrolling on mobile, they could literally just click a button or an arrow and immediately go all the way up to the top of the page. And that just helps people who have probably been scrolling for a while reading your copy. Okay, so that's it for me today about mobile landing pages. Here's what we actually discussed and the things I really hope you take away from this video today. Number one, it is not enough to create a landing page for desktop and hope it will work on mobile. You have to pay careful attention and work on your mobile landing pages. Number two, remember that people on mobile do not behave the same way that they behave on desktop. We don't have the same mindset and we try and do different things on mobile. And that's why it's not enough to just make it look good. You have to actually change the mobile landing page and adapt it to mobile user behavior. Go to Google Analytics, use heat maps, look at how people are behaving on mobile and adapt that behavior if you need include plugins, include the different sections that are missing for people who are behaving differently on mobile. And lastly, there are three key important elements you have to take care of on your mobile landing page. And that is your image, your call to action button, and the text. Thank you so much for listening today. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Join us in our Facebook group, We Optimize, where we answer questions all week about landing pages, emails, funnels, and everything you need to know about increasing your conversions and driving more leads and sales. See you soon.